how to port forward a Minecraft server. That's what this video is going to show you exactly how to do. It's going to show you everything from getting into your router to port forward to even making sure that the port forward is working. All of that stuff is going to be covered in this video. Now, first things first, we do have an in-depth text guide in the description down below. I actually prefer text guides a lot of the times when doing tutorials like this. And so because of that, we do have this provided for you. It goes through everything with screenshots and all of that. And this is linked in the description down below if you prefer a text format for learning things like this. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and jump on into it. And the first thing is we're assuming you've already got a Minecraft server set up, right? That means it's set up on your computer. It can be launched. You've joined it probably via localhost and all that stuff, but your friends can't join it yet because you haven't port forwarded. I've already got that set up and in the description down below we have an in-depth guide on how to set that up. This covers everything and this tutorial is always kept up to date to the most recent version of Minecraft. So currently that's 1.20.4. If 1.20.5 comes out or 1.21 comes out, both of those will be covered here as well. And I've already got that up on our computer right here ready to go. So wanted to get that out of the way as well. Nevertheless, the first thing we want to do when it comes to port forwarding after making our server is actually opening up the command prompt on our computer. So come here into your start menu and type in CMD and you have command prompt. That's going to open up right like so. And I would also go ahead and recommend opening up notepad or getting something on your computer that will allow you to write down basically a few numbers that we're going to be getting from the command prompt. In the command prompt, what we want to type is IPCONFIG, IPConfig, exactly like that, all one word, and hit enter. And that's going to give us some of the numbers we need, and actually the only numbers we need for this. And one is our IPv4 address right here, so let's go ahead and type that up, our IPv4. And for me, that's 192.168.1.2. Dot one dot two. Yours is probably different. That's why we're coming and getting this out of the command prompt instead of me just giving you the numbers that you need. Next up, we need the default gateway. Now, I have two default gateways here. One is numbers and letters, and then one is just numbers. We want the one that's just numbers on that second line under default gateway. So in my case, 192.168.1.1. Now, before we move forward, I do want to mention that you don't need to port forward if you host a Minecraft server with our company, Simple Game Hosting. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash SGH, to start a Minecraft server the simple way. In just a few minutes, you'll have your server up and running and your friends online. No port forwarding necessary, and you can add mods, plugins, and mod packs to your server and truthfully customize your server any way that you want. The whole point of Simple Game Hosting is to make Minecraft server hosting simple, and that means no port forwarding is needed. Plus, if you do run into any issues along the way there's expert live chat support there to help you out so go check out simple game hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash sgh to start your minecraft server the simple way so now that we have these numbers though what we want to do is take our default gateway i'm gonna go ahead and copy that and then open up our browser and open a brand new tab and then up here at the top where you would normally type in the breakdown.xyz simple game hosting.com youtube.com where you would normally type in a website paste in your default gateway. So in my case, 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. Now for me, a login box kind of pops in from the top. Yours might do that. It might be a true pop-up window. It might be a nice GUI. And in the center of the screen, there's a nice login box. But what you want to enter into this is your router's username and password. And unfortunately, this is different than your Wi-Fi password. And we have a guide in the description on how to find your router's username and password. Typically, start with method one. It's going to be talking to the person who had you set up your internet. Then check the router itself. A lot of times there's a sticker on the router with your router's login info. And then if not, you can try your default username name and password. There is a link here to find that on routerpasswords.com. And then last but not least, you can reset your router and try the default stuff. And then if that still doesn't work, you may have to contact your ISP. By the way, most people find it by method two. There's usually a sticker on the router that you can use. But once you found that, go ahead and log into your router. I'm going to do that, and then I will meet you to port forward. So here we are. This is what my router looks like. Yours probably looks completely different, but don't worry. I'm still going to give you all the terms and potential places that port forwarding could be in your router. So even if your router doesn't look like mine, that's perfectly okay. On top of that, there is a guide, of course, in the description down below, which is how to port forward on any router. This video goes through all of the most popular routers that are out there today and goes through how to port forward on those specific routers. You know, Verizon, AT&T, Netgear, Asus, it's all covered in that video. So go check it out. And even if your specific router is not in that video, then it's probably still worth checking out. 
because a lot of routers use similar software. So you'll pick up the terms, potential locations and stuff like that. And the biggest thing that I can stress, don't be afraid to just click around on your router. You can't really break anything. And if you do, routers are super easy to reset to back to default. But the only thing that I would save is your port forward. So unless you're confident you're port forwarding, don't save anything on your router and nothing will change and thus no issues will occur. For me though, it's going to be in advanced here and then it's going to be in advanced again and then port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could be in apps and gaming. It could be in a security tab. It could be called single port forwarding. It could be called port forwarding slash port triggering like it is for me. It could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It can be called NAT Gaming, NAT Gaming. It's probably going to be in an advanced and administration tab. It could be in a setup tab, a networking tab, or it could be in a firewall tab. Tons of different places that it could be, but generally just look around your router, click through everything until you find port forwarding of some kind. From there, you're going to be able to add a port forward, add a service, or you have a big list of just empty boxes. If that's the case, go with the first box on the list and enter in your port forwarding information. For me, I have to add a port forward with add custom service. Once I've clicked that, it opens up a menu and basically like a little area where I can add a port forward, starting off with the service name. For you, this could also be called an ID and all this is is an identification for what the port forward is for. And for me, that is a Minecraft server. It's what it probably is for you as well. But I guess this would work for non-Minecraft servers as long as you knew what port to forward. Nevertheless, for the protocol, we want to do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or the word both. It could literally be the word both. If you can't, for whatever reason, select both of these, most likely you can, but if you can't, just do this twice. Once for TCP and once for UDP. The only thing changing being one of these would be Minecraft TCP, and then one would be UDP because you can't have the same name twice, most likely. But most of the time, you can select both, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Now, for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, external port, internal port, first port, second port, outside port, inside port, doesn't matter, anything involving the word port, you want to enter 25565. And guess what? Internal port, hey, every time I hear the word or see the word port, what do I do? 25565, that's what you want to enter there. Now, from there, there's one more thing that we want to mention here, and that's the internal IP address. It might not be called that for you. It might be called your inside IP address. It could also just be a drop-down box and a device, right? It could say device and then a drop-down box of all devices that are connected to your network. What this is, is actually that IPv4 address we found earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.2. If you can enter in the IP, do that. Otherwise, if you have a drop-down box of all the devices on your network, you want to select the device that you're using for your server. So in my case, I would select my computer from a device drop-down list. Yours would be whatever your computer is called on your network. You would select that. From there, you can go ahead and click apply, save, you're good to go. At least 99% of you are. There's 1% of you out there that has one more box, and that's the external or outside IP address. Well, guess what? Every single person watching this video needs their outside public IP address because that is what your friends are going to use to join your Minecraft server. So let's go ahead and go to the description down below to here. This is where you can get your public IP address and it shows you why you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. Because anyone who gets your public IP, they can not only DDoS you, hit your internet offline, things like that. They can figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's super important that you only give this out to people you would basically invite over to your house. But nevertheless, you can go ahead and click to copy this. And by the way, if you do want to have anyone join your server, you want to have a 24-hour server, all that stuff, that's where Symbol Game Hosting comes in. So you can check that out. First link down below, the breakdown of the next YZ slash SGH. Nevertheless, we click to copy this. If you did need an external or outside IP for your port forward, come back over here, paste that in save the port forward, good to go. Otherwise, we can now go ahead and minimize our browser and we want to start our Minecraft server. We can also close out of Notepad and Command Prompt and I'm just going to double click on the server jar here, but obviously you could run it with a run.bat file. However you run your Minecraft server, just run it like that. And then I'm also going to go ahead and open up Minecraft and I will meet you on the main menu to join this server. All right, so here we are. The server is live over here on the left-hand side and Minecraft itself is open. Now you can join this by going to multiplayer, 
clicking proceed here. And what we want to do is click add server. Now I'm going to name this public IP because that's what we're using to join this. And you can only see 4.3 here. Just like you can only see 4.3 back on the website because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. So we're just showing you that the IP address is the same here as it was on the website. Now, when we click done, it's going to go ahead and after a few seconds, resolve the IP here. Um, I changed the message of the day for a thumbnail. Just, just ignore that. But nevertheless, this is now good to go. We can double click to join it at least I can, and most of you will be able to as well. You can see on the left-hand side, we have Nick's games in here. I'm blocking out some of the console because it does show my IP address when I join the server, and I don't want to have to, you know, cover that up in the editing. So because of that, covering some of the console, but you can see Nick's games right there has joined. However, you might not be able to join via your public IP address, and that's actually okay because you can join using local host as the IP. So if you were to come in here, we were to do local IP, you can use the IP local host to join your server. The only people that have to join this server via the public IP address is actually your friends and your family, people that aren't on the same internet connection as you. You can always just use that local host IP to join the server. Your friends, your family, people that aren't you know, in your house or whatever, those are the people that have to use that public IP address. Why might you not be able to? Well, that's because you're connecting back to yourself. And some internet service providers truly just block that connection. They just do not allow you to connect back to yourself. And it makes sense in a way because it is a little weird. However, if you're friends and family still can't join off of your public IP after you've port forward, it's probably Windows Defender. And there's an in-depth guide in the description down below that shows you how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. It covers everything to allow you to get your friends to join your server. Once this is fixed, restart the server and you should be good to go. Your friends should be able to join. If you are still having issues or you're having other Minecraft server issues, we do have this guide as well, which I wanted to link, which is how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It goes into tons of different issues you may have along the way of fixing a broken Minecraft server. But nevertheless, Generally, if someone can't join your server after a port forward, it's because of this, Windows Defender. It could also be a firewall on your computer or on your router blocking it, but most likely it's Windows Defender. And you could also turn off antiviruses. I've seen those block connections like this as well. But nevertheless, that is how to port forward for a Minecraft server and allow your friends to join your locally hosted server after port forwarding. I do want to mention one final time that Simple Game Hosting does not require you to port forward at all. You can just buy a server and you're good to go. You are good to start playing instantly. So you can check that out in the description down below. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video and I'm out. Peace.